It will be a gorgeous evening in the Arizona desert as the Cleveland Indians, the defending American League champions, take on the world champion Chicago Cubs for the third and final time in Cactus League play. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. One week from tonight, the Cleveland Indians will open up defense of their American League crown in Texas against the Rangers. Many of the roster decisions are already set in stone, but there are still a few up in the air. Who's going to play second base in the absence of injured Jason Kipnis? You would think it's Jose Ramirez, though Terry Francona hasn't committed to that 100% yet. Well, Ramirez coming back into his own last year where he started in left field last year, ended up at the All-Star break going to third base. This year, he may have to play a little second base. But boy, did he make a name for himself, turned into one of the Indians' best hitters, hitting over 300, one of the best clutch hitters they had. You know, he may, Tino doesn't want to switch him to second. He wants to keep him at third, but we'll have to wait and see, uh, you know, how long Jason Kipnis is going to miss. Reports are that the Indians and Ramirez are very close to finalizing a four-year contract extension. That's certainly good news for the Tribe as they look to defend their American League crown. And tonight, they take on the world champion Chicago Cubs. Danny Salazar will be on the mound for the Tribe. He didn't get a chance to start against the Cubs last year in the Fall Classic, but he did face them out of the bullpen. We'll be back with the play-by-play -play action from Goodyear right after this. Before it's all said and done, it will be a packed house here at Goodyear Ballpark tonight in this World Series rematch for the third time in Cactus League play. They played to a tie in one of the games we televised early in spring. And then recently, the Indians beat the Cubs 4-2. to two. That was over in Mesa. And now they meet for the first time this spring here in Goodyear as the Indians have taken the field behind a right-hander, Danny Salazar, who will get the start here tonight. And the Indians will oppose this lineup for the World Champion Cubs under Joe Madden. A lot of their regulars are here tonight. Kyle Schwarber in right, Chris Bryan at third, Anthony Rizzo at first base, Javier Baez batting cleanup, Wilson Contreras behind the plate. Ian Happ, good-looking young player in left field, will hit sixth. Albert Almora in center. Pitcher John Lester will bat eighth. 
Joe Madden does that quite often with his pitchers in National League play and Chesney Young is a shortstop hitting ninth. And Salazar will make his seventh start of the spring. You know he's gone five innings in his last two starts a couple of starts ago when we went uh, to San Antonio pitched a whale of a game in five innings gave up four hits a couple of runs those were tainted but he had nine strikeouts his last outing against Colorado he gave it up gave up eight hits and seven runs he did strike out five but uh, gave up the eight runs so we'll see if Danny's going to tune it up to tonight. Well I know Terry Francona would like to see Danny get you know deep into the ball game. Some of that may depend on pitch count. Some of it may depend on how this game plays out. The wind is blowing out. It's a pretty good breeze and the ball already we know flies in Arizona as the first pitch misses up and away. So who knows we could this could be one of those games where you see a lot of run score. Well the key for uh, Salazar is uh, locating that fastball get it down in the zone. We always talk about tempo and his first two pitches have, has been upstairs. A lot of times he can breeze out there when he's got good smooth delivery with his fastball then he mixes that change up in and he makes hitters look silly but it all comes off command of the heater. There's a fastball in for a strike and it's two and one and this is that point in the spring where you want to see your starting pitchers really start to round things into shape as far as command is concerned. Yeah, it's two and two. No doubt. I mean, you're getting ready to, to get out here. Tito said he will be the number three starter this year. It'll be Kluber. Carrasco will be number two if he's ready to go. He'll pitch on Wednesday. Then it'll be Salazar, Tomlin, and or, or Bauer. Bauer. Yep. The two two is swing and a miss. He strikes him out with a high fastball. Let's check that Indians defense for you behind Salazar tonight. It'll look like this. In the outfield, it'll be Brandon Geyer in left field. Austin Jackson is in center. Uh, Abraham Almonte over and right. Yandy Diaz is at third base. Lindor is at short. Ramirez at second. Edwin Encarnacion at first. Roberto Perez behind the plate. Here's Chris Bryant. And he looks at a fastball that just misses for ball one. Bryant, like just about every hitter in that Cubs lineup tonight, having a terrific spring. That's what he hit last season. He's hitting 298 on the spring. Inside 2 0. Well, it's a team that is blessed with very good offense. They are loaded, they are stacked. You better have your A game when you're facing this lineup. And he takes a little something off and Bryant sitting dead red with a 2 0 count out in front of it. Well with Danny's fastball you have to look uh, for it in a 2 0 count and he just pulls the string on him and he has him out in front of it. That fastball is smoke deep center and it's going to one hop the wall. Austin Jackson misplays it Bryant will stop at second. Not sure he had any chance to get the third anyway. Well, that's so it's a one-out double. That's the pitch he was looking for. Two and zero. Oh. He got a fastball out over the plate. He drives it to right center, and he has excellent power. But again, it's elevate. That pitch is upstairs, and he just takes it the other way. It short hops the wall in right center field. So the first hit will be a double by Bryant. It's almost like the old uh, saying: "Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, well, shame on me." And and he was. Even though he was fooled badly on the changeup, he said, I'm still sitting fastball. He sure. got it and crushed it. Good hitters make their living on fastballs. Yeah. Now Anthony Rizzo. He's hitting 300 on the spring with three homers, five driven in with three doubles. A very dangerous tandem, though, as we saw in the Fall Classic last year for Chicago, right smack in the middle of that lineup. Well, you don't see many people stay on the play like Anthony Rizzo does. He just he smothers it, and he keeps the ball fair. That's inside somehow. That's hard many to do. Times. It's hard to do. He's slightly open. He's very quick on the inside part of the play, but you have to go in there. And he has on two consecutive pitches. Both those pitches were outstanding. If you're going to have to try and hit that fastball. And you're going to have to pull it. You better start it early. And now, now he's vulnerable to that changeup. We would think. Because he didn't swing at the heater. 
Bounced it. What a job by Perez to block the ball. And that keeps Bryant at second base. Well, I'll tell you, Perez and Gomes, both of them, they do a wonderful job of moving their body and getting in front of it to save extra bases throughout the course of the year. And there's a good job right there because then you can move that runner to third and less than two outs and an easy RBI opportunity. Roberto Perez is trying to get as much playing time as he can because during the WBC, despite the deep run, he didn't play a lot behind Yadier Molina. Right. Struck him out inside. He stayed in there but took something off. And Archie swung right over the top of it. Yeah, I, you know what? It looked to me like it might have been a slider. Because sometimes he can get full with Salazar's grip when it comes to the changeup, but it looked like a, a, a little slider there. I can't really see the grip. Mm -hmm. It is. It's a slider. It had that spin to it. So he just kept running it in on the hands, and he, he pitched Rizzo very well. Yeah, that was really textbook pitching by Danny Salazar, and now Javier Baez. Right-handed hitter. And he was a little late in making his decision. There you go. See that? There's the grip we can see where you're going to see the spot. You can see that little blue uh -huh. dot yep. on the baseball. That's when you know it's going to be a slider. But he splits his fingers when he throws his change up. And sometimes, depending on the pressure he has on those fingers, you'll see the ball that will run like that as well sometimes. Ground ball right to Lindor. And the shortstop will throw him out. No runs ahead, a man left. The Indians are coming to bat when we come back. Danny Salazar with good reason to smile after breezing through that first inning. Home half of the first, and here's the Indians starting nine tonight. Jose Ramirez will lead it off. Francisco Lindor bat second. Then it's Carlos Santana. Edwin Encarnacion batting cleanup. Brandon Geyer is fifth. Austin Jackson sixth. Yandy Diaz, Roberto Perez, and Abraham Almonte. That gives... Tito nine right handed bats against the southpaw John Lester. Well there you have it John Lester he's only making his third start you're looking at the numbers of last year for Lester a wonderful year 19 and 5 244 ERA but he has made a couple of minor league starts down there off away from all uh, you know the hype and here's a guy that he knows how much work he's going to need the fastball he's got a great cutter which is his bread and butter a curve on a change up. And we know one thing, he doesn't throw to first base either. But still, people. One ball and one strike. The Indians have announced a press conference tomorrow morning with both Chris Antonetti and Jose Ramirez. So that would indicate that they will announce tomorrow the contract this extension for Ramirez. Four-year deal with a couple of options. It's nice to get this guy locked up and that's what they've been doing. You know you get your players locked up that you have to get locked up. This guy had a terrific year. Chopper to short. 
And Chesney Young will throw out Ramirez. One away. Let's check out that uh, Cubs defense. Looks like this. Ian Happ is in left field. Albert Elmore Jr. is in center. Kyle Schwarber over and right. Chris Bryant at third. Chesney Young at short. Javier Baez is at second. Anthony Rizzo at first. Wilson Contreras behind the plate. Well, in addition to the contract extension that appears to be forthcoming for Jose Ramirez, thanks to our good buddy Tom Hamilton, who is a terrific interrogator, <laughs> Brody Chernoff, Indians GM Mike Chernoff's son, who was a little guest commentator with Hammy the other day on the radio, and he let it slip that uh, the Indians are trying to lock up Francisco Lindor to a long-term contract. And why wouldn't you if you could get it done? It makes, certainly makes a lot of sense. What a year Lindor had a season ago. Swung out and missed. It's only two. And that was a big curveball. That low yeah. hook from Lester. See, that's the equalizer for, for John when he throws his fastball and then the hard cutter. He can really take something off with the curveball. And he went back to back with it. Two down. All those right handers end up, you know, he can be awfully tough on righties because you look for that cutter inside and it opens up the outside part of the plate, and that's where the hook goes. Starts off the plate, comes in down and away, and also he has that little changeup that can go down and away as well. So that's what makes him so tough against righties. And he's been doing it for a long time. Here is Carlos Santana. Pops the first pitch up. Playable for Anthony Rizzo, and the Indians go one, two, three. We're scoreless after one in Goodyear. I'll go to Archie Canan, the weatherman in the Sports Time Ohio Weather Center. What are those things in the sky? We never see those out here. Well, we saw them all winter long in clouds. <laughs> but, you know, they just started to come in tonight. Beautiful sunset. Big crowd packing Goodyear ballpark between as we watch the Indians and Cubs here tonight. And Wilson Contreras leads off. He looks at a fastball strike from Danny Salazar. Both of these teams, Arch, are going to have to deal with how do you handle all of the distractions that come with what you accomplished a season ago and with the idea that every time you go into a ballpark now, you are wearing the bullseye. Yeah. Diving stop at first base by Encarnacion. And the flip to Salazar for out number one. Well, nice play. Eddie, look at he's smiling. And I'll tell you what, Salazar in his own right, he got over there in a hurry and, and Encarnacion let him. And he made a nice play. He had to go down and get it, but he was right in step with it because he got over there in a hurry. Didn't have to change his stride. He said, get over there and get it, big man. But picked it up right off the ground. Good play. 
Also that's one of those cases too. We talk so much about the defensive shifts. Look at where Encarnacion was playing defensively. He was way over yeah. in the hole with the right handed hitter and he was positioned ideally to make that play. Breaking ball down and into Ian Happ. This is a young player that was the ninth overall pick just two years ago out of the University of Cincinnati. He's a native of the Pittsburgh Pennsylvania area. And he's had a phenomenal spring batting over 400 with five homers and 17 driven in. Yeah tough lineup to crack into though. But he's another big kid. But boy Chicago you talk about a team that has done a terrific job building you know through the draft and making some key trades. They did it though with more offense where a lot of teams try to do it with pitchers. The Cubbies has gone. They've gone to the hitters. And they have some very good offensive players. Free you pay big there. money for a John Lester, but if you right. can develop some guys like Half, Schwarber, other guys, I mean, you got a chance. And that's the first walk issued by Danny Salazar. Tonight's storylines Michael Brantley he's going to play three in a row that's the plan anyway starting tomorrow so he'll play Tuesday we will televise Wednesday he's expected to be in a lineup and then again on Thursday if he clears that three game stretch with no side effects hey there's still an outside chance he makes this ball club coming out of spring training but Terry Francona said tonight no I don't want to make the opening day target some kind of a deadline. Solid line drive by Albert O'Mora and the Cubs have two on with one out here in the second. But the good news is Michael to this point has played without incident. Uh, he's he continues to progress. Terry said his at bats have been fantastic this spring. Well you would expect that you know they just don't want to put in the situation all right you're ready be ready for opening day and then all of a sudden something happened because he has not had any setbacks there everything's been positive so let's just wait and see all right Arch so here's an interesting situation now with one out and two on you've got your pitcher up because he's batting him eighth tonight well it's funny he looked over I was watching him from the on deck circle Madden standing right there he looked over and Madden said I don't care just go ahead hit swing. You're not going to bunt them over. You might during the course of the year when you're facing somebody and trying to get a couple guys in scoring position. A little high one on one. You know, Lester not known to be a, a great hitter by any means. Inside corner with a good fastball, and it's one and two. The Indians will have an interleague series almost right out of the gate. Their second series of the year, they'll come back here to Arizona after visiting Texas, and pitchers will have to hit against the Diamondbacks. Yes, they will. He tries to bunt with two strikes, and that's out number two. Let's go down to Andre Knott. Well Matt I heard you talk a little bit about roster moves and I think one of the moves to look at as we go into the final week is the Andy Diaz who's playing third base base right now for the Indians. The team hasn't confirmed that Jose Ramirez will play second base when the season starts with Jason Kipnis's injury but they're looking at Diaz they're working him out every morning at third base and really it's not about him stopping the ball arch it's more about the throw over the first base that they're worried about after moving him to the outfield last year. Yeah. So something to watch over the next couple of days. That's funny a lot of people think just because sometimes they move you from an infield position it's because of your glove a lot of times it is because of your arm. Two on two out Chesney Young the batter and he fouls one off down the right side Andre. Remember earlier I asked Tito about Ramirez playing second base and while he's not ready to commit to that yet he said. If Jose can play second base in the short term it gives us more options and what we can do with maybe third base. Exactly. I think Matt, that's what they want to know is the option there. And I think what you guys are talking about with Brantley if Brantley can play you know left field four out of five days. It gives you a lot more options. I think and I'm just going to get out on a 
stand out in the limb rare. I think they want Diaz to be on the team. I just the way they've done everything this spring and the way they've kind of used him and played him and the way they're working him in the morning. I just think they're giving him every opportunity to be on this roster. He can swing it. Man. Oh, he can hit. And you know, when them. you're missing a Kipnis for a while, you want some offense in there if you can get it. But Terry certainly won't sacrifice the defense to get that offense. But you know what? If this kid's working hard and he's got an opportunity, they can protect him for a couple of weeks. Why wouldn't they? Two on, two out, 0-2 pitch. Turns to second, but nothing doing there. Well, I, I talked to Jason just the other day, and I said, what do you think? Maybe third week of April? He said, if not sooner. So I don't think this is something where we're going to be wondering how long Jason Kipnis is going to be out. He's, I think he's already fighting the training staff, trying to get well, back as soon as he can. Yeah, players do that, though. And yeah. you know what? Brantley tried to do it last spring, and you can see what happened. Uh, things turned around. Everybody's ca uh, cautiously optimistic now. You know, you, especially at the start of the year, we'll be going home. The weather will be a lot different. I'm sure than it's been 80 degrees here for the last two to three weeks. It will not be 80 on opening day. I'm going to go out on that limb that Andre was that, just yeah, on. Yeah, that, that redwood limb. That doesn't have a chance of breaking. <laughs> Well, you, it's going to be a big limb to get you and I on it. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't get on a limb with me, put it that way. Popped in the air and foul again. Boy, Chesney Young is just slapping at the ball, Arch. He's not really trying to, almost looks like he's not trying to put a ball in play as much as he's just trying to foul everything off. Well, and that's, you drive pitchers crazy. And look at uh, Perez, uh, Perez wants to go out there and talk to him. You know, he's just slapping him. He's not trying to put it in play until he makes a mistake. He strikes him out. Four K's for Salazar through two scoreless here in Goodyear. Second inning, no score, bottom of the second. They're five, six deep at the hot dog stand. Concessions all around the ballpark. Packed. They're still filing in tonight. Yeah. Edwin Encarnacion will lead off here in the second inning. Smoke down the left field line. Fair right on the chalk. Hits the sidewall. And that'll enable Encarnacion to glide into second base with a leadoff double. And Arch, for all his prowess as a power hitter, I have seen him do that at least a half dozen times in the limited games that I've seen him play this spring where he just smokes a ball on the left field line. You can see that front foot just glides back and then takes a short quick step and he didn't get that pitch inside for him and he just roped it. Looked like it got chalk. But he's quick on the inside part of the plate. That slightly open stance. 
But here's Brandon Geyer now. Another guy that does a nice job against left-handers as well. Fouled right back. Geyer, another guy who came over last year in a trade and contributed nicely as you see there but also in that postseason run in particular in game seven of that World Series he was right in the middle of those late rallies. Down and in one and one. There you see last year a 336 average six homers off left handers. That's with the, the Indians after coming over from Tampa. And let's not even talk about hit by pitches. He's by far and away number one in the league. Good pitch by Lester, and he had Geyer kind of caught in between. That's Looked good initially, and then it just buried down and in on him. That's the cutter. And, and that's a field pitch and this guy has as good a feel on a slider or a cutter as you can get. And there's Geyer 31 times. And that it seemed like everyone was down below the waist. Punched in the air shallow right it'll drop for a hit. And Carnacion stops at third. The Indians at the corners to start the second inning. I'll tell you one thing. That was a nice job of hitting and not giving up in a strikeout. That was putting the ball in play. Because even though maybe you were looking inside no for the cutter, there was no stride. He picks up the ball away and just slapped mm -hmm. it. But you say it doesn't get enough of it, it falls in. He gets the job done. And that's what happens. Good things can happen when you put the ball in play. And it certainly did that time. Austin Jackson now steps in. Officially informed that he will make the 25 man roster as long as he makes it to Friday healthy and in one piece. But so far, he's had a, a very good spring. You know, he was a little bit behind physically when he got here, just well, getting himself back into, you know, everyday playing shape with the knee surgery a year ago. Yeah, I was what, would he get it in June or something? But this guy's a quality center fielder, man, and, and always has been since when he came over to Detroit. He can roam the pastures. That's one thing you haven't really had a chance to see him do a lot this this spring. But offensively he's picked it up. Could be a nice addition against left handers for this ball club and a good guy too. Yeah. I mean, solid. Yeah. He's good teammate. Been around. Yeah. yeah. Knows how to do his job. And that's the other point Rick that you know what you were saying. He doesn't have to play every day. He knows how to come off the bench. Well, when you have a guy like Naquin who's going to get the bulk of the play against the right-handers, here's a guy that can spell that kid for a while, and he's not going to hurt your ball club. Chased one in the dirt. Did he get Down a piece to second of it? base goes Geyer. Oh, they did say he got a piece of it. All right. Didn't look like it, but I they, they he say did. it didn't look like it. Unless he hit it on the bounce. Buries the curveball down. Didn't look like it to me. But I'm getting old. I can't see that well anymore. <laughs> There's the one, too. High fastball, wow. and Jackson punches it down the right field line. That'll get in Carnassi home, home with the game's first run. And the third base goes Geyer as Schwarber had a little trouble picking the ball up. But a nice piece of hitting yes. by Austin Jackson. The last two guys up there, I, I think Lester, you, if you can see his emotions, he was upset because he buried that pitch. It might have been up, though, and he didn't get it as high as he wanted it. And that ball, it enabled him to just fight it off. A really good job. Watch him. He knew they wanted it up a little bit higher above the belt. Didn't get it there. So Jackson ends up winning that battle. Now Yandy Diaz punches one on the right side. Only play is at first for Baez. 2-0 Cleveland as Diaz drives home his ninth run of the spring. Geyer scoring from third. I like the approach the right-handers have put on John Lester. Instead of going up and trying to pull that ball like uh, Encarnacion did, these guys are going inside out and going the other way and fighting them off. Look, it hasn't been hit hard, but it's been effective. I'd be afraid to try that against Lester just for the fear of that cutter come bearing in on you. Well, that's what you do. I mean, it, 
you're not going to hit it if he throws a good one. You know. Yeah. And, and a lot of times you try and take it. it it's 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 a tough pitch to lay off if you're right handed. Roberto Perez. With two outs and a man in scoring position looks at a ball down low. He's starting to use the outside part of the plate now after watching the approach. Roberto played alongside Francisco Lindor for Team Puerto Rico in the WBC. Breaks his bat. That's what happens when you try to pull it. <laughs> you see, it's actually a ball. It looks like a strike, and by the time it gets into that hitting area, as a hitter, you commit, and the next thing you know, it's on your hands. And you can't, if you can early in the count, try and take that pitch, because most of the times it'll be a ball if he's got a good one. And he will he will do that to a lot of hitters. Get your walking back with a new bat. The problem is with that pitch, it's got to be tough to identify because it, it looks like a fastball. Right. That's the toughest thing about it. I mean, it just that's the pitch now that all left handers throw. The cutters, cutter, cutter. And they mix it up with a change up away. Oh, that's a line shot in the left field and a base hit. Half plays it back on his heels. But Jackson stops at third and the Indians have runners at the corners again with one out. Now that's a, a cutter that didn't cut and I think stayed middle of the plate and he hammers it. Watch Perez. That one started outside it just runs right back over to the plate. He maybe wanted to throw it a little farther out and get that back door cutter but he missed and Perez did not. So it's four hits in the inning and there's three runs on the board. And now Abraham Almonte. And Almonte's spot on the ball club very much up in the air right now because you know, Lonnie Chisenhall ran into the outfield wall. He, a little shoulder, a slight injury there, so he, they were going to sit him for three days. Terry saying that oh, he's said before the game that he's feeling better. Is, Perez just took off on the pitch. The ball was in the dirt and an easy steal. Two in the scoring position now with one out. Well, here's one of the slower guys you have, but he knows Lester's not throwing to first base, so you can go on first movement. And it looked like uh, Contreras was going to come up and maybe fire to third base and take a look at Jackson. And he has a cannon back there, too. But getting back to Almonte, you know, if, if Brantley makes the club, if Lonnie's not hurt and he can be on the club, is Almonte, is he the odd man out? Could be. We did, you got to look and talk about options. If, if, do they have any? And Almonte has an option left. Three and one. And, you know, again, it comes back to how many pitchers is Terry going to take? Are you going to go five outfielders? Are you going to be comfortable with just four? Especially if you take a Michael Martinez who can play the outfield in a pinch. Just so many. And Terry told me today, look, there's a lot of conversations going on. We're, for, we're far from a consensus right. on the final roster. They have a week to go. And I'll tell you what, they, they truly don't on a couple positions because you're, you're, you're waiting on players. You're waiting to see. So, you yeah. know, they have multiple scenarios teams, multiple yeah. teams if this happens and if that happens and there's still well six days after today so we will see Indians last spring training game will be Friday here in Arizona but then off day Saturday workout day Sunday season opener Monday in Texas ground ball right at the second baseman Baez this will get another run home and it's a three run second inning for Cleveland as Almonte drives home his 11th run of the spring. Yeah. And that, that same approach arch, the inside out, take it the other way. It's worked very well. It has in this inning, that's for sure. They've done exactly what they have to do. And, and there's a lot of times a ground ball will score you a run. Just put it in play. And they have done that in this inning. Jose Ramirez grounded out his first time up. And he takes a strike. If you joined us late, Jose Ramirez and the Indians reportedly close to an agreement on a contract extension. 
And the Indians have announced there will be a press conference tomorrow with Chris Antonetti and Ramirez. And we imagine that will be to formally announce an extension that is believed to be four years with a couple of options. Ramirez coming off a phenomenal season. The switch hitter who is just incredibly consistent from both sides of the plate. Right back to Lester. This will end the inning. But the Indians bring the lumber here in the second. Encarnacion doubles to start it. And three more singles result in three runs for the Indians. We go to the third inning here in Goodyear and the Indians leading it three to nothing. Danny Salazar will go to work against the top of the order. Kyle Schwarber will lead off. He struck out his first time up. We we're talking last inning that Terry Francona said Lonnie Chisenhall is feeling much better since crashing into the outfield wall a few days ago. Let's hear from Lonnie himself. He's downstairs with Andre Nunn. Thank you very much Matt. Lonnie uh, first of all how do you feel after running into that wall last week. You know uh, I feel better than I did yesterday so that's a start. But you know, I'll, I'll keep progressing. I know we got about a week left before opening day, so you, you know, do as much as you can every day and take advantage of, you know, this small downtime right before the season starts. I saw you doing some work earlier today, before everyone got here. How much work and how much are you pushing? Because obviously, opening day is a week away. It's not the finish line, but everybody wants to be on the team, then, right? Yeah, absolutely. You want to be ready to go at the start of the season, especially, you know, with what we're we're looking forward to. So. You know, it's an artificial deadline. You know, it's it, last thing you want to do is have something linger farther into the season and affect your play. But you know, you want to be ready. If I if I can get on the field and be helpful, I, that's probably what I'm going to do. Hey, Arch, you might want to hear this. Lonnie learned something today, just like you probably learned something. What's that? He realized that there's a 10-day DL uh, and not a 15-day DL. Now, how much does a 10-day DL? And I'm not saying you're going to start that way, but how much does that help? relax you that if you don't start off you can be with the team a little bit sooner than usual it's good for a lot of reasons um, I know you can post eight stuff in the you know spring training but you know that, that those times in the season where you know you don't need two weeks off maybe a, maybe a starter needs you know to miss two starts and he can you know do that or you know position guys a little nagging injury that can you know get rid of in 10 days you know my situation is it's nice where you know if that is a scenario it, it's not going to linger too far into the season. Despite the injury, it seemed like you were very comfortable this spring. It seemed like you were swinging the bat well. You've been here the whole time. Maybe this is just the week that you needed off, like everybody else got. Yeah, it's unfortunate <laughs> we only had a, a seven days left after I went down. But you know, it, it's it's bad timing. But you know, you I was feeling good this spring. Uh, I was much better than last spring. So I, I think I maybe got one or two hits last spring. But it was nice to come in. I tried to you know stay calm, understand. You know, I, I started out pretty slow at the plate, but. You know, it takes time, especially, you know, 
once you get here and you're, you're not feeling yourself after a short off season and you know trying to get cranked up zero to 100 real fast. Last thing I'll ask you we've already had a couple guys leave to uh, become fathers or you're going to do that again this year. What, what's going on with this team. All you guys seem to be uh, having kids this summer. <laughs> you know I, it's a, it's a good thing. You know there's a lot of celebrating going on last year a lot of things you know, to be happy about so. I'm sure that had a little something to do with it. Um, yeah, we're expecting a baby girl in August, so you know, my life will change a little bit after having some boys, but you know, hopefully it's for the good. Cutter gonna be all right with a dog, with a little sister? <laughs> He's still convinced it's a boy. So, you know, I, I'll believe it when I see it. I have two boys already, so you know, I, I'm looking forward to August. We Did, appreciate do it. Do they man. have good a name picked out? Do you have a name picked out? The boys want to know up top. No, we're, we're You're battling. not allowed to no, tell. No, we're battling back and forth right now. So, you know, Lonnie Jr. is always <laughs> Lonnie Jr. is the last card I'm gonna hold. Hey, Lonnie so, Anderson, that worked like. out pretty well. Yeah, Matt just had a good one. Lonnie Anderson worked out pretty well. How about that? Yeah, you know, we'll we'll see. My my wife likes to, uh, you know, be a little bit different when it comes to name. I'm probably more traditional. You know, uh, it's it's hard for a five year old to spell names if, if it's a little you know little tweak. So. That's what I'm, I'm trying to stay away from. So we're going to have to wait till about August to find out. Is that right? Probably it's going to go down to the wire. All right. Well, we'll be waiting, man. We appreciate it. Take care of yourself, buddy. All right. Thanks for having me. All right. Thanks, Andre. And thanks to Lonnie. Two down. Boy, and Danny Salazar looking sharp here tonight, Arch. He's given up a couple of hits. He's walked one, but he has struck out five. And it's just the way he's gone about attacking some of these hitters that has been impressive. Well he has 33 strikeouts and that leads I think all of baseball. He was tied with Kershaw and stuff coming in. We saw him as two starts ago in, in San Antonio. He had nine in yeah. his five innings. He was electric. And then his last start he pitched pretty good into the second inning and then they uh, Colorado lit him up and they they scored eight runs off him. But the key is for Danny stay healthy. I mean that that's the big thing there. He's got a good what do you have 130 innings last year and it ever well, after the all star break and making the all star team just never came back. Yeah. So you got to see him out there for a whole year. And the three two down and in he missed ball four. But even though he walks Rizzo with two outs he stayed with his plan throughout that at bat. He was not going to give him anything out over the plate anything that he could do damage with. He's been just consistently keeping a ball in smothering him. Well his first at bat he did he buried him. He ended up putting him away with a slider. Right there and really made him work and think inside but you're right you don't give in to that guy because you make a mistake and he can hurt you. Javier Baez a ground out his first time up. Low and away ball one. Just off the outside corner. And it's 2 and 0. Oh. Last year, Javier Baez hit 273, played 142 games. Had 14 homers. The guy that was drafted right behind Francisco Lindor. And the Indians had a, you know a lot of discussions in the room about Baez. Yeah. When that draft came about, just as I'm sure the Cubs talked about Lindor. Right. Yeah, you're right. If, if the Indians would have taken Baez, you would probably think the Cubs would have taken Francisco Lindor. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Watch his 2 1 off speed pitch from Salazar. Yeah, that's a breaking ball. And you can see the hitters because they get geared for that fastball and they're looking for that one uh, that they can drive. But you know that's that's going to be the question with that elbow for Salazar I think throughout the course of the year with the breaking balls that he throws and the way he holds that split will the elbow hold up. Throughout the course of the year. Well going back to the, the conversation that. Andre had with Lonnie with the 10 DL, day DL now. Will we see teams use it for that very purpose to keep guys fresh throughout the course of a season? Danny Salazar has fanned a half dozen Chicago Cubs 
in three scoreless innings of work. Live Indians baseball is back in 2017 with the MLB.com at bat app for your smartphone or your tablet. You can stay connected with live radio broadcasts, stats, breaking news, and more. Download the number one app for live baseball. That's MLB.com at bat. Boy, what a pleasant evening here in Goodyear. Just a week ago, temperatures here in the Phoenix area were 90 and above unusually warm even for Arizona for this time of year but boy this is a lot more comfortable yeah yes it is high chopper to third Bryant slings it across one down <laughs> Carlos Santana fouled out to end the first he swung at that first pitch and, and I, maybe I was seeing something I want to look again I thought I saw him hitting from an open stance and on his front toe I've never seen him swing the bat like that right handed he's open a little bit little there's that tap. little toe tap yeah that's something new You know, he used to have that high leg kick. This is Encarnacion. You remember how he came back and how quick that foot was? You know, he just slides it back and then uh, steps it up. I don't know. They could be talking. Downstairs. That's all it is is a timing mechanism. But he used to live that leg straight up and go from there. And that is a timing mechanism for the hitters. Santana, very patient hitter. For the most part, but uh, you know, just as I say that, you mentioned last time he goes yeah, up and swings at the first pitch. No, he usually up. he gets aggressive when you get runners in scoring position. He loses his patience sometimes when he gets into counts because he wants to drive those runs in. But this guy is an excellent hitter. I'll tell you, he has a good eye at the plate. He's usually very disciplined. He gets that walk a day. It seems well. Like. A lot of his walks though come when he's down the count 0 2 and yeah. then he works the count doesn't swing at bad pitches and then they end he up he doesn't try and do too much yeah. he just he's patient I mean he'll swing and miss a little bit but that's OK he makes pitchers work and I work very hard to trying to out. beat the shift but Javier Baez with a nice play up the middle two down. See, watch, there's the toe tap. There's Santana where he gets that foot out as he brings it back and he taps it. Let's watch Encarnacion. A little tap and then goes from there. I guarantee Encarnacion has been talking to Santana this spring. And and, and, and that's good when you have a teammate you can relate to. And I'm sure that it, 
Ben Berkelio and Q, the hitting coaches here, they they talk and incorporate. And watch his front foot's going to do the same thing. He just sort of glides his way into it. Just Not a as pronounced, tap. right? But well, he might have been taken all the way there. Yeah, this is maybe something new for Carlos, and it's he's got to iron it out. 30 or more homers each of the last five years. Arch, we talk about it all the time, how players develop at different rates, different, you, you, you know, you can't put the same timetable on every player. And Edwin Encarnacion is a guy that, you know, I'm sure the Cincinnati Reds look back, you know, he did hit 26 homers one year for Cincinnati, but didn't really have a position when he was back there with them. Down goes Encarnacion and a good inning for John Lester. But through three, it's the Indians three and the Cubs nothing. Fourth inning and the Indians with a three nothing lead Wilson Contreras to lead off for Chicago tried to bunt he did pull it back in time and it's ball one yeah that's a little shocker you think you're going to try and start the inning off and then you see an inside heater coming there you got to back out of the way. Speed pitch in for a strike. I was just thinking, Arch, you know, for the outfielders, they've been battling the, the high sky, the mostly cloudless sky on a daily basis yes. out here in Arizona. A night game has to be somewhat of a, a welcome relief for them. A breath of fresh air. Well, that one's deep into the sky and gone. Wilson Contreras absolutely mashes one out of here. His fourth home run of the spring. And the Cubs get on the board here in the fourth. It's a 3 1 ball game. Well you're right during the day I might not have seen that ball in the sky but I didn't miss it going out of here tonight. I could see it and it was deep and it looked like a changeup from Salazar and it's going to be right back leaking to the middle third of that plate. He drops the barrel head of that bat on it and hits it a long way so he gets the Cubs on the board with their first run. Third hit. And now Ian Happ following one straight back. Happ walked his first time up.
Terry Francona who grew up in New Brighton Pennsylvania wanted to seek out Ian Happ if he had a chance before the game and just talk to the young man because Happ is from not too far from where Terry grew up. And obviously Terry recognizes this kid's got a chance yeah. to be a pretty good yes, major league ball player when his opportunity arrives. What was he the ninth pick in the country. Swung out and missed. Boy that was a nice change. Deep swing. Yeah ninth overall pick just two years ago. Seems like Salazar tonight been throwing a lot of, of off speed pitches down in the count. 2-0-2-1. Two, oh, two, that fastball just not close enough to get the, the, the hitters to, to swing at it. That's way too high out of the zone. Another good off speed pitch from Danny Salazar results in his seventh strikeout of the night. Well, take a look at Danny. He started out a couple of fastballs that were up in the zone early. There was a fastball, but then you're going to see a steady diet of change ups, a couple of slide. There's a slider there, a little curveball there, and change ups galore. And when this guy's on, he gets a lot of swings and misses, but he cannot be afraid to keep using that fastball either. Albert Almora single to left his first time up. Swings through it. Foul tipped into the globe. Tried to hold up. Did he go? He did. And that is strikeout number eight for Salazar. This looked a, a curveball to me. That's exactly what it was. Perez said he knew he, he had him going. Had the swing. Good location off that plate. It was not a strike, but he ended up getting him to check his swing and go around. Eight strikeouts now. We're just in the fourth inning. John Lester looks at a high fastball. Lester tried to bunt with two strikes his first time up fouled it off there for a strikeout. <laughs> Bouncing ball to second base and Jose Ramirez throws him out. Wilson Contreras gets the Cubs on the board with a long ball. But Salazar comes right back for two more strikeouts.
continues to work his way back. And yesterday he went deep against the D-backs. Brantley's at bats have been dynamite. Even when we watched him in uh, some of the simulated games, it didn't look like a guy who missed any time at all. It's amazing, Arch. I know he has a, a pretty simple offensive approach. His swing is low maintenance, but my goodness, it doesn't look like he's missed as much time yeah, as he did. That doesn't surprise me. He's a hitter. He's born to hit, you know, and he can hit if healthy, and it's, hopefully he's going to get healthy and stay that way. Rest of the Indians injury report, Cody Anderson, Tommy John surgery, so he's done for the year. Lonnie Chisenhall day-to-day, -day, as is Eric Gonzalez, and Jason Kipnis is hoping to be back by the middle of April, if not maybe that third week of April. Big flash of lightning just illuminated the center field sky. Swing and a miss by Brandon Geyer, who singled and scored in the second inning for Cleveland. Yeah, Brandon did a nice job of getting Encarnacion to third when he had two strikes on him and fooled by the pitch, but just flipped it the other way. Pops this one up, and the second baseman, Baez, takes it for out number one. Well, you can still guarantee yourself opening day tickets, but you have to purchase a full season ticket package. Plus, you got great prices. You could get postseason priority and much, much more. Just go to Indians.com. Season tickets for the details. I know the guys are excited to get back home to Cleveland. The opening day. Monday night, one week from tonight, will be in Arlington against the Rangers. And then the following Tuesday, they'll be in Cleveland for the home opener against the Chicago White Sox. Austin Jackson, an RBI single and a run scored his first time up, and he slugs this one on the ground to short. Staggers Chesney Young just a bit, but he makes the play two down. Well, back in the, the second inning, Austin Jackson a nice job of taking that cutter in and Lester wanted to get it a little bit higher but what a nice job of pulling the hands inside getting the run home and that's exactly how they created that uh, three run second inning. You, you could almost see Jackson say something as he swung and, and he was running down the line like Man, you got to really get your hands yeah. through to hit that pitch. He's seen Lester over the years he knows. Yeah and Lester just wanted it just a little bit higher he was upset with himself but. You know, they call it the game inches. More times than not, it seems like the pitcher wins those battles. Yandy Diaz, an RBI ground out his first time up. The Indians have said throughout the spring that they like the bat. It's the defense he's just got to work on. to earn a spot on this club or to make his way to the big leagues and right now because of the injury to Kipnis there is an opportunity and so can Diaz win that spot on the club to be the third baseman in the short term got him looking nice job of pitching once again by John Lester who is now set down eight straight.
six packs are on sale now and include a new Thursday afternoon option. So ditch the office cut class and get the progressive field for some of this summer's biggest games. Visit Indians.com six packs and purchase yours today. 3-1 Cleveland as we roll to the fifth inning. Chesney Young, the number nine hitter to lead off for Chicago. Chicago likes the fact that Young is a versatile player, which could, you know, make him eventually, Rick, a, a nice guy off the bench in the National League style of play. Question is, will he hit enough to be a, you know, a viable option? Well, he's playing short tonight, and they've got a pretty good shortstop in Addison Russell there, who's just a kid himself. So, like all clubs, look. you look and see how versatile a lot of players can be if you don't think they're going to be a star at one position. Now, he hit 373 in college, and in his first couple of pro seasons, he's hit over 300. But just based on that first at bat didn't look like a guy that you know offensively looked like he was just trying to survive bangs this one hard to first but Encarnacion with a nice play one there. Well the rosters continue to be shaped by every club this time as we are just a week away from opening day and the Indians most recent moves they sent a couple of pitchers to triple A. Bradley Zimmer, who had a solid spring, was sent back to minor league camp along with Adam Moore and Richie Schaefer. These guys uh, were, you know, basically told you're not going to make the club, but they're keeping Tyler Olson, Eric Kras, Chris Calabella, and Daniel Robertson uh, in major league camp. For a couple of reasons. One, an injury, you're, you know, you never know. And also gives them an opportunity to, to be seen by some other clubs, maybe. Diaz hangs on to Schorber's pop-up, two down with a little wind pushing it back to second base. Well I mentioned uh, we saw a couple of bolts of lightning way out beyond center field. It has been very breezy here tonight in arch with no upper deck. The yeah. wind comes into play a little bit uh, more here. It certainly does. It's never it's never an out until you see it in the glove. Look at Salazar's laugh and he's watched. He started out at third base calling for it and caught it about 15 feet from second. Indians go into a defensive shift here for Chris Bryant three on the left side of the infield and he breaks his bat and beats the shift blooping one in. Yeah he beat him uh, for a double in his first at bat to right center on a 2 1 heater this time they throw the fastball in even though they're shifting he breaks his bat and still finds a single. Well since this is the final meeting of the spring. And for that matter unless they meet again in the World Series it's the last time they'll see each other this year. It's worth noting that you have the rare meeting of the two platinum glove winners Francisco Lindor of Cleveland and Anthony Rizzo of yeah, Chicago. I didn't think about that. So you've got the gold glove winners that goes to that goes to every position every in each position. league and then the platinum glove goes to the best overall defender one in each league in each league right. That's that's something special and Frankie won it this year. You know that's uh, that's who's, a, a who's very that, special who's that guy award. in 1976. He must have been young. huh? Yeah a little younger than Lindor. But that's OK. There was no platinum back then. They didn't <laughs> dig it enough. It was only gold. He's yeah he's something special so and Rizzo won one. You've got to be special. We don't get a chance to watch these guys play every day over in the National League. Occasionally you'll see highlights and things, but it's special when you see a guy that's very good at his uh, his position. Oh, nice. nice breaking ball, and it's in there for a strike. Very one, two. nice. That's more of a curveball there to come down. He's thrown more tonight than he has, I think, in, in quite a while in one game maybe that's something he's working on on the side but he's dropped a couple of dandies in there tonight. One two foul back remember Arch you know Theo Epstein and then the Cubs have, have done a very good job building their team and using the financial resources to add free agents. 
People forget Anthony Rizzo was originally a Red Sox guy. Well, I remember. Highly touted prospect. Went to San, to San Diego. Diego. And then I don't remember the trade that brought him to Chicago, but obviously it turned out to be a very good one. Andrew Kashner. Yeah, Kashner, right. Popped out of play. But going back to the point I was trying to make earlier in his first at bat, and that was a great job of pitching by Salazar to strike him out. I think it was a game you and I did a couple of years ago in Wrigley. And I don't remember if it was Bauer or Kluber. They, they were trying to pound him in, and somehow he still got to an inside pitch. Kept it that fair. It looked like it was off the plate, and he kept it fair down the right field line. How does a left-handed hitter able to do that? I don't know, because when you're on the dish, a lot of times, if you're going to hit it hard, it, it's going to have that spin to it where it's got a very good chance to go foul or if you're not going to break your bat you're going to pull it into the seats as close as he is to that plate. His hands are so quick in there and oh that was a nice pick. I, I don't know how you keep it fair to be honest with you I really don't. But even though he can still beat you in there you still have to go in there. Well yeah I just don't make a mistake in there. There's times he's going to guess with you and he may beat you but you know. Salazar has enough on his fastball to get it in there. And with two down and Brian at first. The 2 2 pitch. Stayed in, but just off the plate. But you see, that's the thing. You have to throw it in there for a strike to put him away. You know, if he doesn't swing. It's a good pitch, but it's a ball. It's in off the plate. See if he follows that up 3 2. I'm going to call it an off speed pitcher. I'm going to call it changeup. Or he may go back to that curve. I was thinking that that slider, that off-speed breaking ball that he struck him out with first time up. He got him again slider. with it. Same pitch, and then Rizzo knows it. He Boy. helped him out that time. Another fine outing for Danny Salazar, who has struck out nine in five innings of work. When my hair is too. Bottom of the fifth, 3 1 Cleveland down to Tito's bunker with Andre Knott. Yeah, we call it a bunker. Sandy walks by. Tito, uh, this outing by Danny already has nine strikeouts. How happy have you been with how, what he's been able to do this spring? First of all, I'm getting a little TV time here, so get out of the way. There you are. <laughs> You're blocking my TV time. No, I think Danny, I think Danny's looking like when, when he works ahead with his fastball. <laughs> hey, hey, uh, I can't say it. <laughs> Don't do that. It's a little late at home, but not that late. I get in trouble. 
That's outstanding. He'll be hitting tenth I think, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I think he got you. Uh, when he when he works ahead with his fastball, it sets everything else up, and that changeup becomes you know a not just a weapon but a devastating pitch. And those are the days when you're going to see the strikeouts when he when he's not commanding his fastball, and then hitters don't have to swing at that. That's when he's running into trouble. As you can see tonight, though, when they get their A lineup. He gets a lot of chase on that because he's using his fastball effectively. You talk about the fastball all the time, but it seems like he's more comfortable throwing his off-speed pitches now, maybe than we've seen in the past. Well, I think that comes with experience and, and knowing he's healthy, which is you know you can't replace that. But he looks confident. You know he's not he's not sitting around out there taking a long time. That's something we talk about all the time, and we will continue to. I mean, all week, Mickey and I and like uh, Millsy were want to just tighten up everything and we'll visit with the pitchers and catchers we'll we'll talk to the position players you know they've been out in the field for seven weeks now we can do all this stuff before games having just smaller meetings just to tighten up on signs things like that just so everybody knows where they're going and why as you talk about that the word of the camp has been disjointed because of the world baseball classic this guy hasn't been around here he's back Roberto's been gone how big is this week now for you with everybody back here? It's a little different last week than normal, you know, because it's just the reality of where we're at. We need to get some things done. So we're asking guys to be patient, get here earlier, you know, get your packing out of the way and everything because we haven't had these guys. And we need to make sure everybody's on the same page rather than assume and then learn the hard way in a game. Other storyline I think everybody at home is curious about is Michael Brantley. You told us earlier you expect him to play four times this week or three times this week. What are the expectations that we really should go off of? Well, he's going to play. I mean, he's supposed to play Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And that'll be the first time he'll go three in a row. Now, if something changes, you know, we can certainly adjust with it. That doesn't have to be, you know, in stone. Make sure I don't get hit here. Okay. But don't hurt them, man. Yeah, platinum glove over there but first base. I tell you what, he's doing so well. What I don't want to get lost in all of it is that, you know, everybody looks at opening day. I do it. Michael does it. We all do. But it's not the end all be all. Yeah, we value having him back, but not at the cost of of his of him being ready for the whole season. So I don't want people to think, well, it's either great or no good. It's not a drop dead date. There's a little bit of gray there. And I think the good news is he's doing fantastic. Now, it, will, it won't be one of those situations where he'll push. You know what I mean? Because it seemed last year everybody was pushing for that. Is it after going through what he's gone through, it's kind of like he can explain off his body more? Well, but I think he's been pushing for a year. I really do. <laughs> I don't think people realize how hard he's been working. This didn't just happen. He had to overcome so much, but he's also smart enough to know that He's got a lot of baseball left and he doesn't want to have to sit out. So there's a lot of good judgment there. And we've talked about it before. When we're making decisions, we talk to him because he's going to be honest. He's so conscientious that he, he'll help us with it. Speaking of decisions, uh, the third base or second base situation with Kittas. I saw Yandy hitting her. Yeah, well, yeah, well, he was, it's hard not to when people see him. Just. How do you go to that that then what's going to go this week with his decision believe me that's going to dominate the majority of our meetings this week because we do have to make a decision and it's a tough one. You know we got you know Urshela who is a really good defender third um, at times has been pretty pretty good major league hitter and other times has struggled. Gandhi hasn't even been to the big leagues but you watch him in the batter's box and it doesn't look like to any of us that it's just spring training. He looks like he's a really good hitter. But you know we've, we've moved him around a little bit from right to third and you're trying to make a judgment that's very difficult in spring training because he's not the finished product. That's not really his fault. So we have some decisions to make for sure. You're wow. going to do the comments left oh. and Ian Happ will watch it get out of here. Clears the wall and left and the Indians lead is now four to one. As Almonte Crawford's his third home run of the spring, and Andre, yes, Almonte continues to make a case to make this. You're going to get me punched, but that was where I was going to go. Almonte's making a heck of a case to be on this team, and I know he's done everything you've asked. How difficult is it for a guy like this right now with you? Well, I, I, I don't know about being difficult. I think he's done such a good job that, and we know what he can do. You know, when we got him a couple years ago, when he came in and played center field. And I think we use the term he kind of paid attention to detail and he was always where he's supposed to be. Um, you know again we'll see where our we'll see where we end up. We don't know Lonnie's health. We don't know if Brantley's ready to be on this. So I mean, there's a lot of ways that Abe fits into this equation. Guy at bat I know it's not official yet. There's going to be a meeting tomorrow morning after 
after you speak, which is always very important for those back at home. <laughs> but high level, high level knowledge. knowledge, yeah. But uh, what does it say about the organization to say about Jose that you guys can get to the point that you're at? Because we were sitting here two years ago. We we're talking about him playing shortstop, and he had to go back down. And then last year, I think he, he became the storyline for the team, didn't he? Not? You know what? I know you know we're not supposed to talk about it yet, because but pretty good story. And I'm, I'm proud of our organization, but I'm proud of him. And he deserves a lot of credit because I think the verdict was out last year. Can this kid do it? And he kind of took it and ran with it. I mean, that's what you always ask guys to do, but he lived it out. And you know what? Good for him. And I think what you'll see is when guys, a lot of players that like to play baseball, when they get paid, they actually become better players. It's not that they took their, take their foot off the gas, but they know they can just play the game now, and it helps a lot of guys. Is that what happened to Arch? <laughs> I was just, I, I, I be careful. Yeah, I, yeah, no, I was, thought you were gonna say that's about me. <laughs> Arch, Ar, I don't think it mattered how much Arch got paid. He was gonna go out and catch the ball wherever you put him. I don't think that mattered. No doubt. We appreciate the time. Uh, hey, we're almost done with this finally. Can you? This has been a long spring, and now it's come down to the end. Everybody's like, oh my God, we gonna do this, this, and this. <laughs> how it always works. Right. You know, All right, you got back up here, Maddie. They're lining up for cotton candy and lemonade, although you notice some of the folks a little more bundled up. The temperature has noticeably dropped here since game time. With the clouds and the breeze and some rumbles of thunder and flashes of lightning off in the distance. Javier Baez will lead off for Chicago. He's 0 for 2 tonight, and Danny Salazar just powers a fastball by him. Danny has struck out nine in five innings of work. He's given up just one run on the solo homer to Wilson Contreras in the fourth inning. And that came on an off speed pitch. That was a good fastball there to Baez. And Another there you go. One. You see, he's thrown enough uh, off speed pitches to these guys. His fastball is so good, he can, you know, he can throw it to them a good portion of the time if he can locate it. So he's got it all working tonight. Deep to right, back is Almonte. One away. Arch, the Cubs won 103 games last year. Most people who like to make predictions figure the Cubs are going to be back in the playoffs, probably back in the World Series. What about, though, in the Central Division in the National League? It was just two years ago. We quickly forget. Just two years ago, the Cardinals Card won 100 games. Right. And Can Pittsburgh they, has, was right there with them all. Can anybody challenge the Cubs in your mind this year in the Central, or will Joe Madden's team run away with the well, division? I, I don't know. It's it's hard to say. They dominated their own division last year. They won 200 games in the last two years. Um, and you know, barring any you know major injuries I think there's some pitching and things like that look they're going to have a great year and I think they're going to be the odds on favorite to win it 
But you know, do you ever count a Cardinals team out? I mean, it's hard to do that. Uh, Pittsburgh still may be better than what people are giving them credit to, to be, you know, depending on what happens there. So I think they win their division, yes, but who knows how many games? You can't tell. There's, I mean, they're solid. They've got some kind of lineup and they've got some pitching. We'll see. Wade Davis is their new closer this year. That's a deep to right, and this one He's is not coming Scott's back. Pop. Wilson Contreras with his second home run of the night. That was the heater. I think that he took that out to right field. He hit the changeup in the left field, and boy, this guy has uh, done a nice job. Salazar has not fooled him. Well, they talk about, you know, missing David Ross, uh, the veteran catcher, but when you've got a Wilson Contreras ready to step in, Look, that fastball was elevated a little bit, but boy, he had a nice, short, quick swing, stayed right on the baseball, drives it through it in the right field, and well, he has driven in both their runs and has two of the five hits. 4-2 ball game. Ian Happ has walked and struck out tonight. And it's 0-2. I think the Indians are in a similar situation in the American League Central Division where the prognosticators will look at their club they'll look at the rest of the division and say well the Indians Odds should win favorite. the division. Yeah, you would think so because they've added to what they had last year. In the left is Yandy Diaz and he makes that play look rather routine to them. Well, let's take a, a look at Wil Wilson Contreras' night offensively. The first time up, he's going to get a changeup that's down and in, and he turns on it and hits it a long way. And then in his very next at bat, he gets the fastball up and away and stays on that ball. You talk about a clinic. Two good swings on pitches that were there, and uh, that's going to do do it for Danny Salazar tonight. 94 pitches, so he's definitely you know stretching himself out. And it looks like Salazar is ready to go for game three, scheduled to be the game three starter during the regular season. Timeout in good year with the Indians up 4 2. This is. Well, Danny Salazar struck out nine in five and two thirds, 94 pitches on the night. Gave up two solo homers. Other than that, he was very, very good, very sharp. Now, Sean Armstrong into the ball game. And a fastball in for a strike. Sean Armstrong. He's done a nice job of trying to pitch his way onto the ball club in a bullpen roll. Oh. 
Al Mora swings through it and it's 0 2. Terry Francona and Mickey Calloway have been impressed with the way Armstrong has come to camp, the way he's put in the work in the offseason, and the way he's just improved year to year. And it's inside the bag fair on an 0 2 pitch. He just reached out and poked it down the line for a two out double. Well not much you can do there you can't defend that right over the bag at first base you're down in the count 0 2. That pitch was elevated a little bit though and he was tardy on it so that's where you're going to hit it down the line. It goes back to a point you've made so many times before and that is a pitch that's up even if it's a tough pitch is easier to get to for a hitter. Well, you if can that pitch is down. You got to use your legs to get down and go uh, down and get it where if it's upstairs it's so much easier to at least put it in play. John Lester's third trip to the plate foul back. So Lester tuning it up he must be this must be his last time out before he starts his first start. I think uh, Kluber goes tomorrow for the Indians in Maryvale against the Brewers, so that'll be his final tune-up for his opening night matchup against you, Darvish. Yeah, in that's, Texas. that's going to be a dandy. You don't get many better than that. Well, I mean, everybody's opening day matchup should be a good one because you figure it's everybody's ace yeah. going out there. Right. But, but that one certainly has the potential to be really good with Darvish and Kluber in Texas. To the screen. I'm telling you, Lester's had two good swings here off Armstrong. Of course, he's fallen them off. But he looks a little more comfortable in the box as compared to when Salazar was out there. And now the two strike pitch. Helps his own cause with a line drive to center. Coming around third, trying to score out more. Throw off line is cut off, and it's a one run game as John Lester delivers a two out RBI single to center. Another 0 2 count. So both hits Armstrong has given up has been 0 2, and this is uh, the pitcher coming up and driving in the tying run. And boy, you've got to locate it much better than that. A pitcher with two strikes puts it back in play like that. I know he's. A pitcher, but I thought for sure 0 2 he'd, he'd throw some kind of off speed, little bit of a wrinkle up there just to see if he could get an easy strikeout. Instead, it's a one run game as Chesney Young to the plate 0 for 2. There's the off speed pitch. Three balls, no strikes with Kyle Schwarber waiting on deck. Yep. And he walks it on four straight. So Armstrong yet to retire a batter. He was one pitch from getting out of the inning twice. He had Albert Almora down 0 2 and then left a pitch up and Almora banged it down the first baseline for a double. He had Lester down with two strikes. 
And Lester singled to center, driving home Al Moore. Now the four pitch walk to Young, and you've got big slugger Kyle Schwarber to the plate, 0 for 3 on the night. You know, the Cubs lost Dexter Fowler, Jorge Soler in the offseason, but they must feel a little bit like the Indians in that getting Kyle Schwarber back is almost like making a trade. Right. But was he hurt the second game of the year last year? It, I think it was right here in Arizona when they were playing the deep backs in left field. Well, that one off of his leg, and he goes down in the heap and he says he's okay. <laughs> It looked like he had a little padding under the, uh, the pants there, but it still hurts. I'm sure he's done that maybe in a recent game or so, maybe a week or so ago, not even. Plants off the bat foul. It stays 0-2. This is where Armstrong's had his troubles tonight. Yeah, getting the two strikes, 0-2. It was kind of incredible when you really think about it. You know, Schwarber missing the entire year and then coming back in the postseason and doing what he did, having the impact he had, in particular in the World Series. Yeah, it was very surprising because hitting is one of the toughest things to do in all the sports. Armstrong strikes him out to end the inning. Cubs strand two, but they score two to cut the gap to a single run. The playoff bound Columbus Blue Jackets continue their pursuit of the best record in the NHL tomorrow night. They'll host the Buffalo Sabres at Nationwide Arena. Blue Jackets live gets the night started at 630. Puck drops at seven on the home of the Blue Jackets Fox Sports Ohio. Well Danny Salazar tonight was very good. He had uh, came out explosive throwing nice change ups. He had sliders that we witnessed curveballs tonight and gave up a couple of home runs and Wilson Contreras was the only guy he couldn't solve but he ended up with nine strikeouts walked a couple got to a what was it 94 pitches 94, yeah. 94 pitches and uh, looked very good tonight John Lester stays on to work the whole half of the sixth Lester's only real problem tonight came in the second inning when he allowed three straight hits to Cleveland to start the frame and the Indians converted all three of those hits into runs. That's a foul ball. The only other run that I came on a one out homer by Al Abraham Almonte in the, fifth, that in the fifth inning. Yeah. Yeah, that and was that, was after, that was after that uh, was after Lester had retired nine in a row.
Santana has fouled out grounded out 0 for 2. Big chopper with the shift on. Makes the play a little easier for Baez. One back. Edwin and Carnacion. He started the tribe's rally in the second with a double down the left field line, hit it right on the chalk. This World Series rematch has generated a new ballpark record in attendance tonight. A sellout crowd of 11,624. Chapter third foul. Yeah, this is our first night game of the year. I mean, the Indians have played a couple, and teams are starting to play more night games before they uh, head out of here. There were some 6 o'clock games down in Florida tonight as well. Oh, is that right? Yeah, oh, yeah. I was checking the schedule out, and there was quite a few. I didn't realize uh, our two games coming up the end of the Thursday week Thursday and night Friday. games in Arizona against the D-backs. Yeah, we'll be in Chase Field. And you know the amazing thing? We'll be there to end a couple of spring training games. Then we just jet off to Dallas and come right back and play them again. Yeah. I didn't know we wanted rain. to play them that many times, you know, <laughs> coming out of spring training and going into the year. Of course, the D backs, they have their new manager, Tori Lavello, who he spent some time in the Indians organization. Lester with his fourth strikeout tonight. Two down. Well, let's take you back to one of those moments you'll never forget. Rajay Davis. And I mean to tell you, he rocked the house. Oh, my goodness. It was like uh, crazy. Out on that, uh, that porch out there. And uh, new life for the Indians. They tied it up in the eighth inning. And yeah, that's a moment we'll never forget. And I get it. I know people are always going to say, yeah, but they lost. Yeah, but they lost. Yeah, but nothing. That moment, in that oh. moment, it was incredible. He was uh, choking up this much on the bat. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and fouled off a couple of pitches, and then they just found one in his zone. He got him a ball down that almost hit the cameraman if it didn't. I think it did. Yeah, we have that shot. One and two. Boy, Lester settled in nicely. Remember, they showed us that shot a couple yeah, of weeks ago. Yeah, it almost got the cameraman if it didn't. It hit the it camera. Didn't. Right down the left field line there, but it was it was uh, in the dirt two and two. It was so special. <laughs> you talk about rock the houses, right? Yeah, because because it, you literally. I mean, I remember the people around me when that happened. It it was just utter despair, and then new life. I mean, in the in the in an instant. One swing of the bat. Yeah. Two two pitch. Foul back. <laughs> and for all of the Cubs fans, and there were a lot of them at Progressive Field that night, they went from, we've got this in the bag, to, oh no. Yeah, not again. <laughs> yeah. Although, I, I should amend that. I don't think anybody who's truly a Cubs fan would ever feel like they had anything in the bag until. The final out was actually recorded a year ago. That that comes with over a hundred years of futility. The two-two, good at bat by Geyer, and he takes a full count. Lester thought it was strike three. Ben May, the home plate umpire, thought it was a bit low. Well, Lester's been locked in. I mean, that one inning where it was low, that was a good call. That was down out of the zone, but you know, Lester's been making his pitches. He's moved it in and out and changed speeds. He's really settled in since that second inning. I mean, what a great job. He's tuned up, ready to go Sunday. He's fan five, but the Indians lead it 4 3.
Four three the Indians lead it and we go to the seventh inning and it's Miller time. Andrew Miller coming on. What a year he had a season ago. We haven't seen him. We, we saw him early in spring and then he's been with the WBC the rest of the month. Pitching for Team USA which captured the WBC championship for the first time. So as Miller goes to work let's go down to Andre Knott who's with Danny Salazar and boy did he have a great tune up tonight. Well Danny uh, Matt mentioned a tune up for you as your final start here in the spring and how did you feel about it. Amazing amazing finally uh, spring training is over for me you know it's been a long spring training and just getting wait for the season to start. For a guy like you are you excited to watch and go against a guy <laughs> like Chris Bryant in the lineup that you saw for your final start. Do you like that the Cubs brought all their guys tonight? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, like that, you feel more like like you're competing more. Even though, like every time you go there, you have to go, you know, with your mi mindset to compete. But when you see the guys that you're gonna face during the season, you know, that's that's even better because you know uh, the way they react here. Even though if, if they don't do it that way during the season, you know, at least like you are seeing something. For you, I'm gonna go back two years in your last start here. It was against the Reds, it was getaway day, and you didn't have a good day. I think you walked six guys and you didn't start the season with the team. What is the biggest difference in Danny Salazar from that start to the guy we just saw tonight? I think you you learn, you know. Uh, I know my my job now, you know, the way I think now is just to go up there and and throw strikes. You know, even though if they hit the ball, I have, I just have to pound the zone again. And and that's what one thing that we talk uh, this year when I go here and, and you could see that like, my first two starts they were I was like a little while I got like eight walks like four four innings something like that. And then uh, I was just trying to get better at that. For you now that you're through spring Mickey Calloway had a game plan for Danny Salazar wanted you to pitch a little bit more because of the end of the season. Are you glad that you were had that game plan because. I'd have been around you after the last couple starts, and you seem pumped up like you're you're ready to go. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I think they say like take it easy when when we get here at first. You know, I try to take it easy. This is uh, a spring training, but since the first game, you know, the first two innings you, you're gonna throw up there. You know, it's like you forget about everything. You just want to compete and throw hard, like the, the same way you're gonna do it during the season. Well, the last thing I'll say is this has been a long spring training because when spring training started, your hair was white. <laughs> it's turned blonde by the end of it. Great job, Danny. And, uh, can't wait to see you in Texas in game three. Thank you, man. I can't wait for the season to start. Right? Back up to you guys. All right. Thanks, Andre. That's not the last thing you're going to say either, Andre. I guarantee you're going to carry it on. Fouled off. That was up and in. That's the one thing that managers do not want to see with a week to go in spring training when you've got your front line guys in there. You don't want to see. Somebody get hit by a pitch because that's when flukish things can happen. Well, that's true. You but don't it's want part to of the game. You, you, you got to get them yeah. ready, and it's time to move on because it happens during the year, and you just got to go with it. Man. O2 and Andrew Miller gets Rizzo to ground out, two down. Arch, when we talked to Tito before the game today, we all talk about the WBC. Amongst ourselves, we talk to fans about it. People say, "What do you think?" You know, people are nervous about Andrew Miller. Terry Francona wasn't unlike any Indians fan when it came to watching Andrew Miller pitch in the WBC. He admitted as much today. He said, "You know, I'm watching him pitch out there. I think it was his first or second outing for Team USA." And he said, "You know, he's looked like his veins are popping out of his neck, and he's trying." Bases you know, loaded. You know, he's throwing yeah. everything to the hill. So he was nervous because you look you. You know Jim Leland's going to take care of your guys. He's not going to abuse anyone. That's not the issue. The issue is when you're an athlete and you're competing, that's, that's you're going to try to do everything you can. Well, you just may not be ready to do that. Well, on the selfish side of it, you worry he's our guy. You know, everybody, you know, in this WBC, I think every manager, no matter what team you played for, want to see your guys in your camp. Um, it doesn't happen that way. It happens once every four years. Um, you're, you, like Terry says, you, our hearts are in our throat when we watch yeah. him pitch. I, we'll pitch him in our camp, but you, you can't have him in yours. <laughs> I understand that. I mean, I think the same way when I watch our guys play. I wish they would have stayed here, but it's the competition that makes things go. No balls, two strikes. Miller trying to work a one, two, three, seven, facing bias. You know, do you talk to these guys? 
after playing in it, they, they say it's the greatest experience that they've ever had as yeah. players. So, I mean, how can you not like that? Miller breezes through the Cubs in a World Series flashback. Stretch time in Goodyear. Andrew Miller works a 1-2-3 seventh inning. We talked about him pitching in the WBC. Here's Miller's thoughts on the difference between pitching in the WBC and pitching big time leverage regular season postseason games. It mattered to win games and usually in, in, in March you know you want to go out there and you want to pitch well you want to perform well you, you'd like to have more runs than the other team that kind of thing but it, it's not that important what matters is getting ready for the season and that wasn't the case and I think that you know there were times when I was out there and you know the game was going a little quicker than it, it had to and you know I was kind of sped up and trying to sort through stuff that you know normally in spring training you would take a different approach but at the same time I think it was worth it it was a good experience I got to play in important games and and play with great players against great players so it was uh, a good trade-off. Competition. That's what makes the world go round, isn't it? They love it. Well, it's fun when you get a chance to talk to Andrew Miller because he, you know, he is very thoughtful. Um, not just about you know his role, but his craft and, and what it takes to be successful and the things that you have to do. He's never he's never one of those guys who just takes the ball and goes out there and I'm just going to chuck it, you know. He's got a plan. He's got a thought process with with everything that he does out there on the field. Meantime, Hector Rondon, a former Indians farmhand and, and pitcher who had, you know, really high hopes. The organization had high hopes for him. One one pitch up and in and he brushed Austin Jackson back. Rondon was uh, when I talked to him uh, during the World Series he was very grateful for his time in the Indians organization and and he said everything that they did for me as a pitcher through the injury that I had and all the rehab that I did coming back from that Tommy John surgery did nothing but great things to say about the way he was treated and, and everything the Indians organization did for him. Well he was the Cubs closer last year until they acquired Chapman and then he went into that setup role. And you know, almost disappeared from the scene, to be honest with you. High towering fly ball, deep left center, half back, and so is the center fielder Al Mora, who makes a terrific catch up against the fence. Good play. That's not an easy play up against the chain link. He had a long way to go, and that ball is uh, carrying because he had some top spin on it, and the wind is blowing. He had to put that hand up on that screen to make sure he was going to get there. He knew he was close. He couldn't take a peek but he feels it puts the arm up and he makes the catch and it scrapes his forearm a little bit but makes a nice running catch good play. 
Yeah, I wonder if that warning track there is maybe just a tad wider than he's normally yeah. used to because it looked like he jumped about a stride too soon. He was feeling for the vents, thinking he was already there. Yeah, these are perks you don't play in a lot. This is only the, this is the, the Cubs' first time here, and I don't know if he's ever played in this park before. But you sense it, you feel it as an outfielder getting close. So you put that arm up. He had the, it was the right uh, angle for him to put his right arm up. He was running to left center field. Yandy Diaz, an RBI ground out back in that second inning. When the Indians scored three times. Cubs have made a host of defensive changes. They've got a new right fielder, new first baseman, new shortstop. I think they got a new second baseman, a new third baseman. Here's a look at the new defenders. Jamer Candelario has come in at third. Out of plate on the right side. Off the bat of Diaz. Missed outside on a full count. Well, Arch, you figure Ron Doan goes right back into that, or he stays, you know, in that setup role this year. All the, the Cubs went out and got the Wade Davis from the Royals. After Chapman. Uh oh, that's off the glove on a line drive. And Ron Doan alertly didn't, he didn't assume he was already headed over toward first base. And he's there to take the feed for out number two. Yeah, he was heads up because he stopped thinking he was going to catch it, but he was able to restart again and get over there in time. And uh, that's his night. He faces two hitters, and Joe Madden's going to go to the bullpen. So a timeout here in Goodyear with two down in the seventh inning, and the Indians on top, four to three. Two down, the bases are empty, and Wade Davis, who we were just talking about, who is the newly acquired Cubs closer, that's what he did a year ago. Phenomenal, right? But this spring, now granted, he's only made five big league spring training appearances, but in those five games, he's pitched three and two thirds innings. He's faced 24 batters and given up nine, uh, let me see, eight earned runs. Well, he's their closer. Let's put it that way. And they, they may be coming in to get four outs from him tonight, but this is the guy that can, is going to make or break this team coming from the back end of that bullpen. 
uncharacteristic for Wade Davis in those three and two thirds innings arch five walks now maybe that's just spring training knocking the yeah. rust off trying Look, to get he had some elbow issues at the end of the year if you remember he went down and, and this guy is as good as there has been for the last few years for the Kansas City Royals man he's been lights out he's automatic this guy has the cutter at about 93 94 he's got a curveball he's got a fastball and such a, a great control. Here's the curve. I mean, it's you, too. you look over the last three years of relief and look at the guys and the names up there and batting averages against all closers for the most part. And he's all right those there. guys Once are really good. Yeah, too. yeah right. You know, uh, if you had to pick one of those guys to face, uh, you wouldn't want any of them. No, you, no, you would like, uh, no, no. <laughs> Yeah, they're all they're all very good there. That's why they all get paid good money and they're all closers. Other than Patances was now he goes back into a setup role for the most part. Filed right back by Roberto but Perez. As many times as we played Kansas City we had an opportunity to watch this guy. He's as good as there is when he's on his game period. It's a slam the door save. At least it, it it was. Now they they traded with that Kansas one. City, and Solaire went over to Kansas mm -hmm. City. Kansas City looking for a big outfielder because uh, Lorenzo Cain becoming a free agent at the end of the year, and I see where he has uh, an oblique strain, and he may start the year on the disabled list for Kansas City. The two-two. There's the curveball and it's in the dirt. Full count. But you know what? This guy, when when he would come on and face us during the regular year, it'd be fastball cutter, lights out. He wouldn't mess around with a curveball or anything like that. He's obviously trying to get a feel for his pitches, that's all. And maybe that's what he's working on. High pop up. Shit in the inning. Young, the shortstop, makes the catch. And we'll go to the eighth in Goodyear. Cleveland four, Chicago three. Telecast is presented by authority of the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. We go to the eighth inning in Goodyear, and we've got a new pitcher for the Indians, Nick Goody. You know, I think Terry said the same thing about a number of Indians relievers who are trying to win that final spot in the bullpen, and that is they've shown a lot of good things. Nick Goody, Sean Armstrong, there have been times where they've come in and they have pitched very well. 
A lot of it comes down to, you know, what can you do for this ball club? What's well, the what's the role that you know you're going to be in? Well, one thing is going to be is Carrasco going to be ready, and will they use four starters, or will they add an extra reliever until you know the, maybe the 15th of the month when they we really won't need their fifth true starter, even though he did say Carrasco would be the number two starter. He did if healthy. Yeah, but he's he's thrown three innings in his last outing. So will he be strong enough to go come uh, Tuesday? You know, or give you at least five innings. I think that's kind of what he's probably hoping for. Defensively now for the Indians, Todd Isaacs takes over in center field. Johan Medina is at third. Joe Seaver, who came in earlier, is at first, and Eric Kratz is now behind the plate. Pitches outside. Wilson Contreras two home runs on the night but Nick Goody strikes him out one down Fox Sports supports is proud to team up with National Alliance on Mental Illness and their commitment to improving the lives of families and those living with mental illness learn more about how to be stigma free and visit Fox Sports supports dot com. Ian Happ 0 for 2 on the night. Good off speed pitch by Goody. You know, Arch, you and I sit up here, and this is what is our 10th, 11th, however many years we've been doing this together. We have the same conversations every spring. Last spot in the bullpen, you know, extra guy who's going to fit here. And then a week later, all those decisions that we talked about <laughs> seemingly for three or four weeks. They're all out the window because you're moving on to two and three moves already down the road. Yeah, I mean, once the season starts, April is a different. The roster different can animal. be so fluid throughout the season because nicks and, and bruise, bumps and bruises. And, you look at your 40 men, not yeah. your 25 men, for the most part. I mean, it's nice to make an opening day roster for somebody that's never done that and get out and see opening day and start to see the festivities. It's it's truly that's what you you strive for. Right. But if you don't make it, you can't be disappointed. You got to go down there because, you know, there's an opportunity. You can come up and be a huge impact over the course of the year. Look at Francisco Lindor, who never got called up to the second half that one year. Point being, we saw Sean Armstrong pitch tonight. We're watching Nick Goody now. Both of those guys aren't going to make this team out of spring training. Maybe neither one of them will. But at some point, we're probably going to see these guys this year. And, and, you know, they talk about all their relievers like that. Cologne, who they sent down, yep. and there's other guys that are in the same boat as well. And we, we saw it last year. Nice pitching by Goody. Boy, does he look sharp tonight, striking out the first two here in the eighth. Well, let's see. Haven't had an opportunity to see. It looks like it might have been a changeup up and away that turned it over a little bit. And gets a swing and a miss. So back to back strikeouts for Goody. This is the first time we've had an opportunity to see him pitch. Albert Almora Jr. doubled and scored his last time up. Weak chopper to second. And Ramirez throws him out. One, two, three, go the Cubs. Indians lead it 4 3.
Single game tickets are on sale now, and summer weekend uh, game tickets are selling quickly. So you don't want to be left out. You want to lock in the best seats for the best prices this year and as uh, soon as possible. Go to Indians.com for more details. New pitcher for the Cubs is right-hander Pedro Strope. So Wade Davis came on to face one batter tonight. He retired Roberto Perez to end the inning. And so Pedro Strope, who pitched in 54 games last year, will come on to pitch here in the bottom of the eighth. And we'll get our first look at Will Benson, who is a big left-handed bat. And a former top pick of the Indians. Benson was the 14th overall selection last June. He goes 6 Big 5 yes. and 200 something pounds. They lost him at 215. He looks like he's filled out from that even already in a year. He signed, was he was 17 years old when he signed. So what a thrill for him to get an opportunity to. You know, come up the bat in a major Absolutely. league spring training game. Hey, this kid was just signed last year to be in big league camp and get an opportunity to hit against the world champions. Yes, I'll say that is a big deal. And he strikes out one away. We go to the top of the order now. And Jose Ramirez will bat for the fourth time. Out of play. Yeah, he Will Benson's still only 18 years old. Yeah. He won't turn 19 until later in June. No, well, he saw a pretty nasty splitter right there from this guy. Ramirez shoots one through the right side. He has his first hit of the night. And a one-out base runner for the Indians here in the eighth. And Francisco Lindor. Going to get a pinch runner for Jose Ramirez, and that'll be Ivan Castillo. You know, Tito told us that he wants to see the guys who are starting tonight play most of the game. He said, them out. None of these guys are going to play tomorrow with it being a night game, and then you've got a day game tomorrow. Right. So. So we're getting to that point in spring where you just want to start stretching guys out a little more. Yeah, you want to get your lineup going. You want them to start playing just about nine innings, if not nine, because you know you come back Wednesday and, it, and it's a noon game. You know, so you're getting different times. But he wants to get it. He knows how important it is to get that lineup together. Lindor hits one high in the air, deep center. Almora back and makes the catch on the warning track. Two down. Boy, that hit that ball was smoked, and I'll tell you what, he went a long way to make a catch. A nice running catch here in left center field. He got on his horse, he's not gonna take his eye off the ball and puts it away with room to spare. That's a fun play to make when you're a center fielder. Dead run, you know you're gonna catch it, and you're not near the wall. Carlos Santana 0 for 3 on the night. In the air, right center. And Almora, a much easier play this time to end the inning. We go to the ninth in Goodyear, 4 3 Cleveland.
Ninth inning here in Goodyear. And the new pitcher is Kyle Crockett, who so far on the spring has pitched nine innings, has given up three runs on nine hits, has not walked a batter, and has struck out 12. Now, Kyle Crockett, you know, this is an interesting guy in that, okay, he's a left-handed reliever. He's only 25 years old. He was in the big leagues in just his second pro season. And he pitched in 43 games that year and had a 1.80 ERA. And then the next year, the ERA skyrocketed to over four. Last year, it was over five. And people are wondering what's wrong with Crockett. They're asking Tito. They're asking Mickey. Look, the bottom line, as Terry Francona pointed out, is when we brought him up, he was a kid, very young. We were able to protect him in those 43 games. We didn't pitch him back to back. We let him rest. He came back and he was strong every time he threw yeah, the ball. Right. Well, as he's progressed, they're asking him to do more things like pitch back to back or pitch two or three times in a span of four or five days. That's something he's got to try to overcome and get better at if he's going to stay and stick as part of the everyday bullpen core. And he's not an overpowering guy. He has to throw strikes. He has to control. You can't walk batters. He ended up walking too many batters and maybe that's from fatigue. You know when you ask a guy to do more than he's capable of doing he can't find the strike zone. And there's I mean there's nothing overpowering about him but he has to throw strikes and keep you off balance and make you put it in play. He's trying to close out the Cubs here in the ninth. We'll go down and try to close out our telecast with Andre Knott who's standing by with Frankie Lindor. Well Frankie first of all uh, you got to play almost nine innings tonight after going through the World Baseball Classic. What's it like coming back emotionally playing in a game like this? It's completely different. Completely different. I felt like I was season ready and right now you know, emotions are a little the, the adrenaline is not as as high as like the uh, like um, the World Baseball Classic but still it's still fun it's still it's a good crowd tonight and you know you just got to make sure you work hard day in and day out and prepare yourself for the season. And I talked to Roberto earlier today talked to Andrew Miller today about the World Baseball Classic Andrew goes eh, it was fun it was like a different game and then I talked to Roberto and he said just like the World Series emotionally how close is it to you to what the World Series was like comparing the World Baseball Classic. It felt like it was game six game seven every day. Um, I don't know for the other countries but for us we're trying to uh, play as hard as we could and you know do it keep the intensity as high as we could. I'm sure the other countries the other players for other countries that were working very very hard. I heard that DR in the Columbia game in, in Miami was crazy. The same thing with US and um, Dominican game in Miami was insane as well. Um, and I, the Netherlands playing the Netherlands they felt they looked like they were giving the, their best. You know it was just is emotionally is is different. It's different is you're playing for a whole country. You're not playing for a city. I love Cleveland. I love um, the tribe, but playing for Puerto Rico it meant a lot for me. I, I always wanted to play for Team Puerto Rico, and um, now that I got the chance to do it, it's a dream, a dream come true. All right, now it's time for regular season, a week away. How prepared are you, and can you still build build team camaraderie, things like that, since you guys, you know, because it's been a different type of spring training. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, the more time you spend with your teammates, uh, the the more um, together you're gonna you're gonna get throughout the season. You, you keep on building it throughout the whole season. For, that way, for the playoffs, everybody has one goal in mind, has one thought process, and uh, and that's just winning and doing whatever it takes to win. And uh, you know, we, it's it's a, it's a long season. Um, I found out last year it's a long season. It's going to be a lot of games played, a lot of the bats, a lot of innings. Um, you just got to make sure you stay um, within yourself, day in and day out, and, and keep supporting your teammate and try to, try to win. They, at, at the end of the day, if you win, everybody gets along a lot better. Speaking of that, this will be the last thing I'll ask you. Javi Baez and you have been connected, it seems like, almost your whole life. You went right to his mom after they won the World Series, congratulated him. How weird was it that he had to be your second baseman in a World Baseball Classic? You see him out here. He's got a World Series tat. You guys got any deals to meet up in October, November this year? I hope so. I hope so. I hope we meet up again. It's going to be fun. Um, playing the Cubs in the World Series, it should be fun, you know. And uh, to me, it's my first and only World Series I have, but it was just unreal. And playing the Cubs, the way the fans um, were, the way our, our, our fans were as well, it was pretty cool, pretty special, pretty unique. And uh, I would love to be back, and I would love to play against the Cubs again. Why not? You know, he's, they're the best team right now, so you got You want to beat them, beat them. And um, playing against Javi my whole entire life, pretty much, it's just special. It's cool, and you know, his family are awesome. And um, 
I wish him nothing but the best. Last thing, you took care of the uh, national TV guys with your mom cooking for him last year. Matt and Rick and I, um, we, we don't have to make a date, but <laughs> we expect a meal from Mrs. Lindor at some point in time. You never ask, man. All you got to do is ask. My mom would cook for anybody. We're asking right now. <laughs> my, mom, my mom got you. All my right, here's a broken bat rolling a short. I was thank you. Shortstop. I didn't get no ground balls high. Well, now we're done. You can wrap it up. We appreciate it. Thanks, Take it away, Matt. Thanks, Frankie. Thanks, Tito. Thanks, Cleveland. 4-3, the Indians a winner.